audience and what a joy it is to greet you on this day from the Berean Christian Church in Stone Mountain, Georgia. You know, the Bible says in all of your getting to get an understanding. And there are so many people in the days in which we live now are trying to get clarity on COVID-19. And I want you to know that we have some special guests with us today, some experts in the field who are going to share with us about the coronavirus and COVID-19. Sitting to my left is Brother Liddell Hill, who is a molecular scientist in the area of uh, health and fitness. And then all the way to my left is Dr. Stephanie Richardson from Morehouse School of Medicine. And then to my right is Dr. Joyce Morley, who is a psychologist, therapist, the love doctor, they call her. And they are here today that we may engage in dialogue about COVID-19. I want to say thank you for tuning in. Those of you who uh, subscribe to us, we appreciate it. Those of you who are watching and you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you can always be alerted when we come on with information and insight. Dr. Richardson, I want to start with you and thank you for being a part. By the way, all of these are faithful members of the Berean Christian Church, and I'm just blessed to have them here. I want to start with you to give us some of the facts and myths as it relates to COVID-19. You hear so many things, and everything we hear is not correct. Can you just give us some information on that? Absolutely. Thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity to, um, to talk to our listeners. So one of the, the hoaxes, the, the things I hear about a lot is that this is a hoax, or it's a conspiracy, or it's created. And I can tell you, uh, my training is, I'm a public health professional, um, but my primary training is veterinary medicine. And I can tell you that there are viruses that different species have. So for example, coronaviruses are common in people and animals. And actually, um, for people, they're in the common cold. And that's why you see coronavirus, kills coronaviruses on the back of the Lysol can and the Clorox wipes. So it, it, it's not because somebody was keeping a secret. It's because those, virus, those viruses have existed. In uh, birds, for example, coronaviruses cause uh, mild respiratory symptoms. In pigs, they cause diarrhea. So coronaviruses are not new. And <clears throat> it's been a little bit misleading for people to say the coronavirus as if it's something new. It's a whole family, it's a whole lot of them. It appears that this one um, jumped species from animal to man, but that has happened before. And it, it's not, actually not uncommon. Uh, what's uncommon is that it wasn't contained. So if you look back at uh, MERS, that's Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, that cross species, SARS cross species, so, so that happens. Um, this particular coronavirus, which causes COVID-19, got out of control in its original place, which was in China, and our world is globally connected. So as long as we had airplanes still going and the, the virus did not wait for the ban on flights, um, there was always the possibility that this virus could get out. So, so the first myth that I've heard is that uh, this is a created thing. It, it's not. It's actually a, a biological phenomenon. It's, it's virology, it's biology, um, and we're at that point um, now. The second thing I would say, um, I'm thinking of what I've seen on social media and heard from people. Um, I know that there is, there's a lot of thought about it doesn't affect African Americans. Um, I'm not even sure the context for that. Um, but there's some, I think some people are, are, are doing jokes. They're trying to be funny to say, if you grew up in this way, then you won't get corona and all that kind of thing. The fact of the matter is, this particular virus is an equal opportunity virus. Wow. Everybody gets to get it. So it does not matter how much money you have, how much money you don't have. It doesn't matter where you live, where you don't live. It doesn't matter if your child has a computer to be on, in school while he's out of school or not. Everybody gets to have this particular virus. And so what we have to do 
is the only thing we can do at this point, which is prevention. And I, I'll just say at, the, at this time, the, we don't have a vaccination. It takes time to make that. So that's off the table for right now. The thing that should have happened was containment. Mm. But containment could only happen if there were tests. And the moment we had those first cases and there were no tests, we lost the opportunity as a nation to contain it. That is to isolate the positive cases and to quarantine those people who are exposed. If you do that systematically, you can contain a virus. Um, but we didn't do that, the tests weren't there. So at this point, the tests are most important for people who are uh, working on the front lines like physicians, they're sure. most important for police and firefighters, they're most important for people who are actually sick. For everybody else, it, it is likely that 80% of the population is going to be fine. And so nobody else needs a test. What you need to do is treat the symptoms, which is all anybody's gonna do in a medical facility. It's just that if you get to a point where your fever is 104, your body is not regulating, it's fighting so much it can't regulate, or if you have breathing difficulties, then you need to seek medical care. Beyond that, do what you would normally do if you have an upper respiratory infection. And, and let me say something else about the upper respiratory infection. So the virus lives on surfaces for a while. Hours to days, because it's new, we don't know. And so that's why you get the hand washing uh, recommendations frequently. It enters through the mouth and nose. And if you watch how much you touch your face, it's just unbelievable. We got phones, we got glasses, yes. ch checking your hair, checking your weave, all that kind of stuff. Yes. That's all in the face. <laughs> They're going to check that weave. <laughs> They're going to check the weave. <laughs> and so that, that's why we need to wash our hands often, doorknobs, all of those common things. Um, but the virus has to get in the mouth and nose and eyes to be infectious. It actually can't do anything outside of the body, uh, and it requires the body to live. So if you wash it away, what happens is you strip the coat that allows it to be effective, and mm. you literally kill it with soap and water. Wow. Followed by sanitizer. Sanitizer is another way to kill it, um, the, strip the coat. But you have to do the washing for 20 seconds. Okay. You have to do the sanitizing for 20 to 30 seconds. Otherwise, you're just giving the virus a bath. But if you want to kill it, you have to wash for that amount of time. Now, when if it should enter in the upper respiratory system, for most folks, it'll just cause respiratory signs. You may be asymptomatic, have no signs at all. You may have something like a cold, something like a flu, something like a really bad flu, or it could get serious. The seriousness is when it gets deep into the lungs. Mm. That's when it causes pneumonia. That's when you get the likelihood in, in the cases where people are critical or do not recover. So um, it's not a hoax. It's for real. There's actually something really simple to do. Yeah. Wash your hands. Um, the social distancing that, that folks are promoting now really just means basically physical space. And, and we, we've attempted to, to model that here yes. at this panel. But you want to keep at least six feet away. Okay. And the reason for that is because the virus passes through respiratory droplets. So as I'm talking, I am liberating respiratory droplets. You don't have to sneeze. Sneezing and coughing, too. Okay. But I'm actually liberating respiratory droplets. So these mics are going to be cleaned. And we will not share mics because then right. we will share virus. Got it. So the social distancing, if you can stay at home, please, please, please stay at home. Keep your hands clean. Um, no handshakes. No, I don't even fist bump. You get okay. an air bump. Okay. You get a wave. Air bump. An air bump. You hear that, audience? That's going to be our air bump. Air bump. Come so, on, try it with me. <laughs> air bump. All right. So, so really we want to re reduce the, the um, ability to spread the virus. And the final thing I'll say is, the reason that's so important is we have to reduce the cases. Got it. We have to reduce the cases, and we have to reduce the cases so that our medical system can handle those people who, are, who have severe infection, who have pneumonia. Sure. And in African-American communities, we already have sickness. So if, 
we get exposed and we get pneumonia, we're going to have the worst problems because we already got heart disease and diabetes and asthma and, you know, hypertension. All of that is just going to compound the problem for us as a community. Wow, great stuff. Thank you. Is it safe to say, Dr. Richardson, that it is not uncommon that we obtained it, but it is uncommon that we didn't contain it? Absolutely. That is good. That's you hear good. that? That's, That's good, good preaching material good right there. <laughs> it's not uncommon that we obtain the coronavirus yes. or COVID-19. Yes. yes, yes. But it is uncommon. Yes that yes, we, we did not contain we, we it. Because vi viruses are going on all yes, the time. Yes, yes. But the difference with this one is that we did not it's, We did contain not contain it. It's new. Okay. And because it's new, nobody is prepared to fight it. Got it. Got no it. person and no sure. physical body. So everybody has to build antibodies against it. Got it. But we could have contained it had we had the ability to test for the cases. Got it. Got we it. did not have that ability. Did not have Thank you. Liddell, from your perspective and as it relates to health and fitness and wellness, speak about some of the things that uh, we can do at this point to see to it that we are doing all in our power to lead our best selves. Well, first off, if you haven't been into health internally, we need to start being into health internally because our organs and cells are designed to consume certain compounds that God has made for us. We've gotten so far away from it. We've gotten so far away away from how to even take care of the earth. That's called global warming. Well, there's a lot of global warming going on inside of us. So my take on it is when you come in contact with any particular type of virus, a virus is what they call an exogenous. It means a, a protein that's intruding the body that's causing havoc to the body. Well, the beautiful thing about that is you have certain organs that produce certain things like proteolytic enzyme. A proteolytic enzyme is a protein dissolving, destroying enzyme. It comes from the pancreas. When you're asleep at night, your body secretes, the pancreas secretes about 1,200 to 1,500 milliliters of a lot of these different types of enzymes, normally to break down the food. Now, depending on the type of food that you're consuming, depends on how healthy you're going to be. If you're feeding the pancreas, if you're feeding the gallbladder, if you're feeding the liver and all the other organs and the cells, your body stands a greater chance on staying in balance. So when it secretes these proteolytic enzymes, what it, do, what it would do if you consume bioavailable nutrients, and that means a lot of plants, it's going to get in the bloodstream and it's going to destroy it. Trypsin and chymotrypsin, that's what they do. Also, there are certain things that you can consume that are natural antibiotics, like garlic. It's got about 33 to 35 different sulfur compounds. It takes the body into what they call microphase and phagocytosis. We call it breaking a fever when I was growing up. But what it does is it, it attacks these exogenous proteins and engulfs it and breaks it down. There are many ways of consuming different types of herbs that will help your body. Practically what it does is it gives your body the ammunition that is required to go to war and go to fight for you. The way societies today, we are saturated with man-made chemical compounds. So you have to think about it like this. If you're consuming 70 to 80% man-made chemical compound, already you're taxing the liver. The liver, phase one of the liver, because you got three phases, is required to break down all man-made chemical compounds. If we come across a virus or a common cold, and we have an abundant amount of these man-made chemical compounds, what's going to happen? Your body's going to probably be acidic. If that's the case, all viruses and bacteria live in acidic environments. So if you understand just certain principles about what your organs and cells require just to work efficiently, you stand a greater chance on naturally preventing some of the things that's happening today. In our community, African-American community, we have the majority of the diseases we have anyways in our community, diabetes, is all self-inflicted from our health. Right. You know, we have a tendency to consume because, you know, we had a place now where we're making a significant amount of money, but we think going out to eat, eating fast food, eating a lot of the bread, 
But I don't really think that we understand that the foods that we're ingesting is really causing our health to decline. And once your health starts declining, that's when a lot of viruses, diseases, when they get into in, in your body, it manifests. You have to understand this as well. When you get a certain age, usually around 30, you slow down all production of digestive enzymes and systemic enzymes. Say at 30. 30, you slow down. So this. I got about three more years. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that means when you, right. So that means when you consume um, certain types of food, it's hard for you to break it down. Yeah. That means you slowing down production of certain types of enzymes. If you consume certain particular types of plants, what will happen is something as simple as magnesium. Magnesium is in all leafy green plants. It stimulates over 2,600 enzymes in the human body. There are so many deficiencies in the human body today more than ever before. Elderly people do not produce the abundant amount of systemic enzymes, digestive enzymes. So automatically, they will have, there will be a big target for any viruses or disease. We have to now, since this crisis is going on, start looking at our health differently. And that means not working out because you got to think about it. Working out creates inflammation mm. and it brings that immune system down. It's all about the choices that you make. Right now is a very, very crucial time for you to fast because you're giving your digestive system a break. And when you do consume food, make sure you're consuming foods that has a purpose for the brain and for the organs. Give us a couple examples, Ladell, of what type of foods be good at this season. Sauerkraut. Sauerkraut is one of the best foods that you can consume for microbiomes and butyrates that's in the gut. Because right now, intestinal permeability, and that's pretty much all diseases, fall under intestinal permeability from leaky gut, Crohn's disease, we as a nation and as a country, we have tons and tons of issues with our digestive system. Okay. It causes allergies. The list goes on and on. And so on. sauerkraut? Give me Arthritis. a couple of uh, sardines. I like sardines, sardines and wow. olive oil. Sardines and olive oil has a fat called eicosapentaenoic acid. The immune system feeds on it. Decosahexanoic acid, the brain loves it. It's about 60% fat in your brain. So when you start making these simple choices of things that your organs and cells require to work efficiently, you're going to primarily feel your breast best, and you have a greater chance on fighting some of these uh, exogenous proteins is out here today. Give us one more. Um, garlic is my favorite. Okay. I make a lot of, of these teas. So what I do is I get herbal teas. And I would chop some, i give you a recipe. I used to get my distilled water, I boil the water. You're listening out there? Distilled water. I chop up garlic and I chop up some ginger because ginger is a super strong anti-inflammatory and it's an antiviral. And I get some rosemary. Rosemary stimulates phase two of the liver. It gets rid of necrotic debris, dead cells. Uh, some thyme, lemon, and a little bit of honey. And I may drink up a 16-ounce jar twice a day, especially wow. during this time. Wow. Amazing. Good stuff. And I guarantee you, if you go to stores today, there's some things you're not going to find. But I tell you what, you're going to find sauerkraut, and you're going to find sardines, and you're going to find some of these other things that Liddell talked about. Because typically, we stay away from the things that we should be putting in our body. And we gravitate to the things that we should stay away. Here on my right, I'm happy to have Dr. Joyce Marley, who is a licensed therapist, psychologist, also a member of the DeKalb County School Board for years. There's so much going on in homes, so much with families. People are being impacted in a major way, not just financially, but emotionally. Can you share what you see and what we can do at this time to better protect our minds. Pastor, you're right. There's a lot going on with the COVID-19, the coronavirus. Uh, the bottom line is more parents are being impacted than the children. 
Uh, some children are glad to be out of school, but parents are trying to figure out a way to be able to handle the children being home. They're accustomed to going to work. They're accustomed to being able to go one way and the children go to school and go another way. But in many cases, the children are at home and the parents are responsible for making sure that their education still continues. So you have children, such as my three small grandchildren, who are having to actually go to school from the computers. So they're using the internet. And with one, two of them, they're actually broadcasting from the school, the teacher is live in front of them. They have assignments they have to be able to do, but my daughter and her husband still have to work. My other daughter, they still have to work. So they're having to be in one room doing their work while these children are at a computer from eight to four. So it's taxing, it's stressful, it's emotionally taxing, but then the, one of the major things is that we're in a situation now where most are being depressed or they will feel depressed because of the fact that they can't control the situation. Mm. Wow. We are so accustomed to having control or believing that we have control of sure. what's going on. And now we seem to be at that, that place where we're deprived of being able to have control of what's going on. That sense of entitlement where our children take things for granted, the adults take things for granted, and now they're being forced to be in a place together when in all actuality there was already social distancing and social isolation. You had 10 children on 10 different cell phones right. and having 10 different conversations. And I would watch this all the time. You can go out to the malls, you can go anywhere, or even in the schools, they'd be together, but rarely are they communicating together. At the dinner table, if there was dinner with the family together sure, at all, sure. right. you'd have the children checking their cell phones, they're on Instagram, they're checking their, their emails, they're checking their, their text messages. Sometimes parents are doing it too. Right. So I see this as a way to be able to have us to look at the reality is we were socially distanced before. Mm -hmm. Where a hug didn't really mean too much, where a shaking of a hand didn't really mean too much. We just did it out of the fact that it was expected to be done, but were we actually connecting to and with each other? So now that we seem to be being deprived of being able to socially interact and that emotional connection is wearing on us because we never thought about it before. We never looked at the fact that we had control of how we would relate and connect with each other. Now that it has been taken away from us, how do we be able to handle this? So as you go through this whole thing, there are the fears. But the fears are not so much about getting the, the disease as the fear is about dying. Mm. And so I talk with, you know, we're feeding children. And so we still have people working, our bus drivers, which we thank them, our cafeteria workers, our administrators, our superintendent who has just insurmountable odds. These people are working 15 to 20 hours a day and still having to go by the state and the federal mandate to make sure of distancing. But we have to make sure the children are being fed because most of the children were under federal guidelines. They were getting free and reduced lunch. And if they didn't come to school and eat, so that's wearing and taxing on people. So you have stress. You have anxiety. The anxiety about what's going on, what's going to happen. Uh, we, can't we don't have this predictability, which we never really had. We really never knew what was going to take place anyhow. So here's the depression, the anxiety, the stress, all those things going on. And then there's confusion because we're getting mixed messages. And one of the major things I say is important as we've heard Dr. Richardson, we have all you're talking about what's going on, there needs to be a conversation, some communication and a discussion with the children as to what is COVID-19, what's the coronavirus, what are the impacts, do some facts. I had my grandchildren over last weekend and I had them to sit with me and watch the news, but it's factual, truth news. Now you have to be careful. Because some of this stuff is being filtered in. There's an inlet, but there's no outlet for junk. So making sure that you have a discussion with them. And then here's a time to talk about life. Wow. Here's a time to talk about death and dying. Yes. But here's also the time to talk about hope. Wow. Faith yes. and believing. Seeing the glass as half full instead of half empty. Here's an opportunity to give our children some assurance and helping them to be able to see those people on the front line, the nurses, the doctors, the police officers, the superintendent, the bus drivers, all of these people that we did not value as much, wow. we took for granted yes. because it makes a difference. So here now you have an appreciation. So when there's appreciation, there's a warming of the heart. The emotional 
instability is not as apparent, when you can appreciate and there's happiness, when people are assured of that, there is going to be a great outcome to this. Yes. And then one of the things, you know, I've said is help them as you go through this. By the time this is over, what are the three things you learned about yourself wow. that you might need to do something about? Wow. What are the three things you've learned about your family that you might want to do something about? Sure. What are five things that you're willing to do differently when it comes to relationships with other people. Wow. And so that helps us to be able to not blame people. It helps us to be able to look inside ourselves. And I look at this as an emotional perspective, as a time for discovery a rediscovery of who the self is, yes. but also a discovery and rediscovery about families, yes. about relationships. It's an evaluative opportunity for us to be able to say exactly where I am and to understand what happiness is all about. Because we thought we were happy with the material things, right. but when people begin to be taken away from us, yes. we're not as happy as we thought that we were. My, my, my. Good stuff, Dr. Joyce. Wow. Good time for us to self-discovery and then discovery about those who are closest to us. What are some things that, from your perspective, Liddell, from your perspective, Dr. Richardson, Dr. Joyce kind of hit on it. What are some things churches can do to be a place of empowerment and uh, encouragement during this season? From my perspective, um, Pastor, and I appreciate Dr. Joyce talking about control um, because I think that um, you're absolutely right. When people don't know and people think they can't do, then they get a little fragile. So I think one of the things churches can do is to provide information. When folks have information, they feel more able to make decisions. There's, there's some agency with having information and making choices. And then the other thing I'll say is to understand that we have to look out for each other, yeah. that we do have the information, and actually we can affect the outcome by simply doing what we're supposed to do. The information, we have a history of distrust in our communities, in our neighborhoods, and, I, and I, I certainly understand that. But what I'm saying is the information is within our, our locus of control. Okay. The outcome is within our locus of control. Wash your hands and stay home. Wow. It is really that simple. Wash your hands, stay home. That's it. Makes a big difference. Liddell, what do you see churches can do to... Well, she hit, it, she hit it right on the head, and that is information. Information to the youth and to the elderly that we have to change what we're consuming if we are to stand any chance on not just this virus, but all the diseases that are self-inflicted because of bad choices. We have to really engage that. <clears throat> For me, I feel like that this is... This is something that makes all of us get on our knees. Sure. And it has it, it, it will attack our pockets mm -hmm. and it will most most importantly attack our health. And with those two gone, you have nothing. So we have got to start speaking and teaching that we have to start taking better care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that is a must. Yes. Thank you. Great passage of scripture. I'll start it. I'm sure everybody up here on the panel and those of you watching will finish it. It goes like this. My people perish for what? A lack of knowledge. A lack of knowledge. Is it okay during this season? Is it okay during this season if a family, husband and wife, children, want to go outside and walk? Is it okay? So because the best science that we have to date is respiratory droplets, um, six feet, maybe 10 feet, um, it is okay as long as you maintain social distancing. And so um, actually my family and, and I see folks in the neighborhood, it's amazing as Dr. Joyce alluded, folks are seeing each other now. I saw a neighbor I haven't seen in 20 years. Wow. You know, because we're all trying to do something and we can get outside. So. Um, th there's no problem with being outside. It's still maintaining that social distance from other persons. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Please, please get outside and breathe. Liddell, you touched on earlier about the importance of the immune system. What are some things that 
we can do to better build our immune system? And then what are some things that tears our immune system down? Well, there's a lot of things that tear our immune system down. I went to Costco, and every time I go to the market now, there's always a line of people trying to get in. And I've noticed that everybody's grabbing meat. Meat is one of the most acidic foods that you can put in your body, and they are bombarding their system with a lot of meat, a lot of potato chips. Now, share with them, Adele, when you say acidic, what that means. Well, you have a pH. Your pH is supposed to be around 7.35 to 7.45. That is a natural balance in your, in your body. When you consume a lot of foods that are extremely acidic, all sorts of things start happening from joint pain to skin abnormalities. The list goes on and on. When we consume a lot of the, I call it dead food sometimes, meats, potato chips, things like that, it's really doing a disservice to our body versus trying to help our body. So, you know, Pastor, I've always talked about Genesis 129 because right. that's what I learned when I was a child from my grandmother. What I did is I studied and dissected Genesis 129. God put every herb bearing seed, every tree bearing fruit. When I did, I realized that what that scripture meant to me is the compounds in that is what our immune system requires. And then I connected it to how he expressed taking care of your temple. It just made sense to me. So when we go out there in general population and grab steaks and hamburgers and all this bread, all it's doing is a disservice to our health. We have to be very mindful about what we're putting in our body. And now that we are self-quarantined, that's what they're telling us to do. Make sure that if you don't burn the calories, you don't eat the calories. Mm, say it again, Liddell. <laughs> Make sure we... <laughs> if, you, if you do not burn the calories wow. and you're not active and you're just sitting at home, please do not eat the calories. Mm. Good piece of information there. If you're not going to burn the calories, don't eat the calories. Wow. That is helpful. Dr. Joyce, what can parents do? What can spouses do to encourage one another during this season? It goes back again to conversations. I think too often what we do is we talk at each other and not with each other. It's being attentive, and that's uh, with body language, externally and internally. It's listening. Mm -hmm. It's being there. It's being present and showing that presence, being aware, and especially with our women, being aware of your facial expressions. And with our men, you know, what is your body language saying? Are you connecting? Do you want to connect? Have conversations. You know, asking people about what's going on with them. Where am I at this point in my life? You know, where do I want to be? It's having those conversations that we usually don't have conversations with. It's encouraging each other. Since we're not hugging, then be able to write notes, to be able to show notes to each other, hold up a sign to each wow. other. And I say to families, choose a positive word a day or a positive affirmation. And let that word guide you all throughout the day. Let that affirmation, it could be one sentence, guide you all throughout the day. But it's encouraging that husband, encouraging that wife, that boyfriend, that girl, whomever, the parents, that we're going to get through this together, that none of us is as great as all of us working together. And letting those children seeing you all having conversations, letting those children seeing you all actually interacting with each other is having board games, laughing with each other, yeah. putting on some music. Now, you know we used to know how to dance and right. not have to touch each other. Right. Dance without touching each other. <laughs> See, know, we used to, uh, Dr. Joy. <laughs> right. I mean. That was before bump and grind. That's what huh? I'm saying. <laughs> you know, you can still break it down. And, and you know, I look at the people in Italy, one of the things is Dr. Richardson, you asked her about going outside. They're out on the balcony singing. Yeah. And everybody's coming out. And so here's, a, here's an opportunity for couples to encourage each other. And But don't wait until the devastation to try to come up and decide that we're no longer being informed with hesitation. We're going to do something that now, because you're under, when you get on top, remember where you were. Yes. And you know that's in the Bible. Don't forget. Don't forget where you come Don't from. Don't forget where you come from. Don't My forget mind. all this. And so I think that we've got to stop waiting until there's a tragedy, a travesty, before we begin to recognize the things that we need to do. And then when we get back on top, we forgot where we were at the bottom. Everybody has hills and valleys. When you yes. get back on that hill, 
remember that valley experience because guess what? It's going to come again. Coming back again. And so I think it's support of each other, encouraging each other, saying nice things. But don't say nice things now because there's COVID-19 and the coronavirus. It should be things that we say every day. And I right. think one of the things that's devastated us, and a lot of people are dealing with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, wow. at work, mm -hmm. at churches, sure, uh, in the families. Right. Because how we treat, treat each other. We're so mean-spirited. We don't have anything good to say. We're trying to hold each other down and put our feet on each other. We're trying to block the passageway for people getting to the next point. We're trying to get in there and do whatever we can to hold people down. And I also say, remember, the things that we need to do that if you're going to dig a ditch, you might as well build, dig two. Wow. But you can't. You don't hold each other down. Mm -hmm. And the only way you should look down on a man is pulling them up. Teach that to your children. Yes. Have conversations. But also, it's a time to talk about, as you say it, you want to make sure that you're safe. Yes. You make sure you're sanitized. But you want to also make sure that you don't go insane. Mm. The Bible, scriptural readings. Yes. Talk about it. Let those children sit with you and see you reading the newspaper. And also teach them when you cough. If you're in church, you shouldn't be coughing all over people, sneezing all over. What yeah. to do in crisis like that. Wow. And I think that there's just common sense things that we need to get back to. We've got to be so big, especially as African Americans. We have gotten that big house on the hill, which we don't own anyhow. That car that yeah. they can stop anytime, <laughs> that they can track you along the sure. way. Uh, we're wearing all the, the Brook Brothers, and we have red bottoms that some of them may be painted on. Yeah. All these things that we're trying to deal it's with. It's Dr. Joyce here, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> That is time for reality. It's reality check. Reality check. And so I think that we need to begin to realize that those material. I love nice things, too. Yeah. I like dry, dressing nicely. Yeah. But one thing that I don't forget is our elderly people. We need to talk about our parents, our grandparents. Sure. I came up with a list last week of people across the country, including my older sisters, that I have called each one of those people if they weren't even elderly, those people who may be uh, compromised physically, or something is going on with them. They say, are you okay? We don't treat our, teach our children to call their grandparents. The, here's a time to Skype. Mm. Here's a time to get together and FaceTime. Yes. Here's a time to get together. You want to be on Instagram? Do some instant things and be able to look at how can we get on the phone and just call our people. As Dr. Richardson said, I'm seeing neighbors I hadn't seen. Right. And so here's that opportunity to be able to come back. But then the thing about it, when it's all over, don't forget don't forget. Wow. Dr. Richardson, we have limited time left, but Cheryl, a lot of people are looking for information and factual information. Uh, can you share with us some helpful web websites or articles or whatever people can do to get exposure and educated about what's happening where we are now? Yes, um, cdc.gov. cdc.gov. Cdc .gov has a, an updated site. They update it fairly frequently. That's the best source of the way folks are going to be operating. Um, and I would say just take that information and overlay it on your reality, um, particularly as African Americans. Anything that you hear that you should do, we are already carrying the brunt of chronic disease. We are already most vulnerable. We already have the economic challenges. So everything that you see is tenfold for us. But cdc.gov is the best site that I would recommend. cdc.gov. Yeah. Listen, I want to thank all of you for tuning in on the day. This has just been so helpful. And I want you to know that if we can be of assistance to you in any way in helping you to get through this season, Remember, your password is this too shall pass. This won't last always. And if you have a question for Dr. Joyce Marley, for Liddell Hill, or for Dr. Stephanie Richardson, you can contact our church office, 770-593-4421. The number is on your screen. And be more than happy, more than happy to get you the information that you need. I want to thank the three of them for being a part on today and for helping us to stay safe, helping us to stay sanitized, and helping us to stay sane. Because remember, Psalm 91 is still more powerful than COVID-19. Thank you for viewing. Don't forget 
to subscribe so that you can get an alert every time we come on. And we appreciate you for allowing us to bring this information into your place of viewing. This too shall pass, and you will be all right. God is on our side. We love you, and we thank God for you. Signing off now.